friends, it's Abby from OP, and I am back to do another one of our craft kit workshop walkthroughs with you. I feel like I need sparkles every time I do that. Maybe I shouldn't do finger guns. I don't know. Anyway, we are celebrating the beginning of summer with our DIY flower pots. So this is your heads up and your warning right now. If you are not wearing clothes that can get a little bit messy, maybe a little bit dirty, go ahead and change. I don't want you to accidentally mess up any clothes that you really like because we crafted too hard. So go change, get your kit, and then we can go ahead and get started. Per usual, you should have your instruction sheet, and sometimes there are jokes in there. You should also have a purple folder that has a bunch of different colors of paper. A bag of soil, little packet of petunia seeds, a pair of scissors, puppy paints, two small terracotta pots, a roll of tape, paintbrush, three jars of paint. I am not what I would call a practiced gardener. So I hope the instructions are helpful. When in doubt, you could always ask a friend or a family member if they are experienced gardeners, but you can also always just Google it, which is what I usually do. So if you have petunia problems, you know where to go. So go ahead and get your flower pots, paints, including your puffy paint, paint brush. I didn't include this in the packet, but you might also need a water cup and a paper towel. Lime. There are no rules. Do whatever you want to do with your pot. I mean, if you don't want to paint it, you really don't have to, but I think you should because it's fun. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to paint them all over, maybe in one or two of these colors. And then once that dries, I'm going to go over those colors with my puffy paint to give it a little bit of texture. Give your paint a shake, you can stir it if you need to. Sometimes these mineral paints get a little uh, goopy if they've been sitting around for a while. Make sure you have something to paint on. That way you don't get your table, your space super messy. Go ahead and just paint away. When you are done with both of them, getting them painted, um, let's go ahead and touch base and we can figure out what to do from there. I might give you updates here in a minute about where I decided to go with these, so stay tuned. Really quick, checking in, I painted one of my pots white and the other one red. I think I'm gonna add some cute like details with the puffy paint and the green paint. I'm still not entirely sure what I'm going to do. Those are done for now. I'm letting them dry before I do the puffy paint. Make sure you do that. Also, don't paint the inside of your pot because the sometimes there are things in paint that plants don't like and will make them kind of grumpy and they won't like to grow in the home that you've made for them. If you get a little bit in there, it's fine. It's probably not a big deal. That's all. I will see you again in a little bit when my pots are done. I hope yours are going really well. Okay, we're checking back in. How are your flower pots? I want to show you mine because they turned out really cool. Warning that I should have given earlier. If you use a lot of puffy paint, it might take a while for your pots to dry. Let me show you what I have so far. I did the white paint with the green and I puffy painted some flowers and some speckles on there. I think it turned out really cute. And this is flower pot number two. I did a little face on there. I was just following my craft brain train. I thought it would be cool to do patterns on the outside that kind of look like trees. You know how trees and the tree bark has that really cool pattern as it goes down the tree. Let's go ahead and set our pots aside for now. I don't know if this helps, but you can see I'm picking mine up by putting my hands in little things like this, putting them inside the pots and then pushing them up against the walls. So I'm picking them up from the inside instead of the outside. We can do the paper flowers now really quick while we wait for our pots to dry. What you're going to need for your paper flowers, scissors, tape, your folder of various colored papers. What I like to do for these is go ahead and prepare a couple of strips of tape ahead of time. So take a green sheet of paper and you're going to roll it into a little tube starting at the corner here. And you're trying to go from here to here, not here to here. You want to roll from here to here because that makes it wider. So take your paper here and you're going to start small. 
Try not to bend it if you can. Uh, try not to squeeze it or crunch it, but also try to make sure that your tube stays pretty small. It's almost like when you're making a wand out of paper. You're gonna need to tape that down. So now you have a handy dandy little paper stick. This is gonna be the stem for your flower. Now we're gonna make the flowers. Go ahead and fold your paper in half in what I believe is called hamburger style. And then go ahead and fold it in half again. So now you have this crinkled bit of paper. You're gonna cut down each of these folded lines you just made. So you're gonna end up with four long-ish strips of colored paper. The great thing about paper flowers is they're kind of supposed to be a little bit messy, which just lets your eye kind of fill in the gaps for you. So what you're gonna do next is you're gonna take one of your strips and you're gonna fold it in half again. Take a little bit of tape, put a small piece like this on the edge, the middle, and then on the other edge, like that. Next, what you're gonna do is on the folded edge, that's what I'm trying to say, folded edge of the paper, you're gonna take your scissors and you're going to cut like this. You're not gonna cut all the way to the end. You wanna leave it attached there, you see? But you wanna cut in thin strips like this all the way down. So now you should have something like this. See, it's kind of wiggly. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your stem, you're gonna take your flower, get another piece of tape. You're gonna take this part of your flower and you're not gonna tape it straight across like this. You're gonna tape it at an angle. You're gonna tape it from the top and then spin your paper down and you can scrunch it up, you can pull it down, whatever looks right to you. But once you get to the bottom, you're gonna tape it down and you can kind of take your fingers and you can kind of gently fluff out your petals like this a little bit and that helps them open up. It gives it a little bit more volume. If you need to go in and retape some stuff, that's okay. Looks like I taped mine kind of low because my uh, stem is sticking up there at the top, but you can fix that by just cutting it. And now you have this beautiful, cute little fake flower. I think they look really lovely. I think they look very like eye-catching and just kind of nice. So if you want something cute to decorate your windowsill or your room or your space while you're waiting for your real flowers to grow, you can make a bunch of these. Also, if you actually wanna go for the full lavender aesthetic, you could always get purple pieces of paper. Anyway, let's see if our pots are dry. I hope you had fun making fake flowers. So this is the final step for this craft kit. So you're almost done. Get your bag of soil. So all you're going to do is take your pot. They're small enough that you can just get in your bag and do a little scoop and give it a little shake. And you can fill it right up to the top. That's no problem and like that. So if you are worried about getting splinters like I did just now, you can totally wear gloves or use like a spoon to spoon your dirt in if you want. It's up to you. Watch out for splinters because they do happen. Grab our petunia seeds. Apparently these are fairly good flowers for beginners, which is why I picked them because I'm also a beginner with this stuff. Do you really only want a couple of seeds in your soil. The issue there is these seeds are very, very tiny. So you just wanna be very careful. And at the end of the day, if you get a ton of seeds in here, it's okay. Because if you get a lot of plants growing, you can always repot them. Fill your pot with soil. Make sure you have a nice, even surface on the top to work with. And let's dump a couple out onto our palm. Place them on top of your soil. So the thing about petunia seeds is they do not need to be covered in order to grow. So once you put them on the top of your soil, you're just going to take maybe a pencil or maybe even like your scissors and you're just going to very gently pat down on top of your soil just to get them settled. You don't need to push them down. You don't need to 
stir it or mix it up or anything, if you can actually see your petunia seeds, go ahead and just give them a little tippy tap and make sure they are down into the soil. What you could also do actually is use tweezers and just grab them individually and place them in the soil. Your seeds should be gently nestled into the top of your soil. Like I said, they don't want to be buried. They want to be exposed to the light. Next, you're going to water your seeds. You don't want to dump a bunch of water on it and spill your seeds everywhere. We're going to bottom water our plants. So go ahead and get like a plate or a bowl or something from the kitchen and go ahead and fill it up with water. I'm going to go get mine really quick. I'll be right back. Back, I have this little bowl here filled with water. So you want to get at least a solid inch in there. You're going to take your pot. See how it has this drainage hole at the bottom? That's really important. You're going to just plop your pot down into the bowl of water and it's going to soak up as much water as it needs. So we're going to set that aside. If you have a spray bottle at home or something that you can gently use to add water to the top, you can totally do that too. But the important bit is that it does have that moisture and water in it. While we're waiting for our soil to water itself, I'm going to run you through the instructions for how to care for your petunias really quick. So as far as I understand it, and I could be wrong, so you can always fact check me. I tried to do a little bit of my own research, but again, practicing gardener, you want to keep your little flower pots covered and moist for the first like seven to 10 days. When your pot is done watering, find a nice little dish that your pot can rest on. Go ahead and take some plastic, like your bag. Pretend there's no soil in here. Just take your pot, put it in your bag. Give it a couple of air holes just so it can get some oxygen. You don't wanna cut off air from your plant, but you will just cover it like this and leave it somewhere warm and cozy where it can turn into a little baby plant and you're going to keep it maybe on a shelf in your kitchen or in your bedroom. Once you see the little green sprouts or whatever little bit of plant that is growing up out of the soil, that's great. That means you can take the plastic off and you can move your plant over to a windowsill where it will get some direct sunlight and it will just continue to grow on its own as long as it gets enough sunlight and water. This is the other thing about petunias that you should know. So once you get to the part where your flower is growing and it's this cute little baby thing, they don't need a ton of water all the time. What people on the internet recommend is that you should wait until your soil is completely dry before you water it again. Usually you can tell because the top of your soil will be very dry, but also on the bottom, you can always lift your pot up a little bit and these drainage holes, you could look in there and see if the bottom of your soil is dry or not. If it is still wet, you don't need to water your petunia. If it's completely dry, give it a little bit of water. Bottom feed it just the way we're doing right now and you should be good to go. You can probably bring it over now and we'll do a little check. It looks like mine still could use a little bit of time in the water, but you could always just very gently drip some water up on top of your soil with your hands just to get that moisture coming from the top and the bottom. As long as you're not splashing like a ton of water into the soil all at once. Because remember, we're trying to avoid moving our soil around a whole bunch because we don't want to bury our seeds. I don't have any other advice for you and your petunias then I think you should give it a name because I like the name my plants and I think it makes them more fun to take care of. I'm really hoping mine will grow. Maybe I'll be able to post something later and show you how, uh, how it's doing. That is what we have today. That was a lot of crafts uh, in one kit. So thanks for hanging in there. I am really excited about my flowers. I hope yours turn out well. Let me know if they do, if you plant them, like send me pictures, send us pictures on our uh, Instagram or our Facebook, or you can even email them to us um, from our website. Um, speaking of which, we have a lot of really cool summer stuff. It's all online, super fun. You can find out more information about those things on our website, like I mentioned. And you can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. 
I hope that we see you there. I will be there for a lot of it, so you should come hang out with me. But otherwise, I hope you have a fantastic summer. I hope I'll see you again at our next craft kit workshop. Drink a lot of water, stay cool, beat the heat, it's gonna be hot, but I hope you stay safe and I'll see you next time, okay? Bye.